Hi, friends. I see I'm live. Awesome. Oh, I forgot to tidy up my office again. I'm sorry. Usually I prep everything before I teach a class or something, but of course I forgot to do that. My apologies. It's kind of a mess. How is everybody doing? I did do a post saying I would be hopping on live at 6.45 p.m. Eastern time. We have about five minutes. So I just thought I'd hop on a little bit early, get things situated. I'm, it's just basically question and answer time. So I like to come on live for you guys. You guys have all been very receptive when I do this. Um, I never know when I can do it. The only reason why I'm doing it tonight is because a patient canceled. So I thought of you guys right away. I thought I'm going to go on live YouTube and help my amazing YouTube viewers and help to answer some questions. Hi, so nice to see you. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. This is being recorded. Um, shoot, now I can't remember. I don't think the comments and questions save for the recording. So I'll likely read them out loud. So for anybody who's watching this afterwards, you will still be able to kind of know what questions I was answering. So basically any dental business questions, I'm doing a lot right now. Um, feel free to ask. I was answering some YouTube comments earlier. Sorry if it does take me a little while, you guys. I get some amazing YouTube comments. I get a lot of them. So I do try to go through them late at night, literally while I'm sitting in bed after my day. Sorry, I'm just gonna have some water. <laughs> As you can see, I was being careful because um, I didn't want to spill it all over myself. Um, yes, great. Oh, I'm um, hey from London, Wild Seed, London, Ontario or London, England. I'm in London, Ontario, but everybody, when I say I'm from London, people assume it's London, England. Either or is amazing. Um, great question. So even for studying, do you still need some balance in the day? So are you referring to if you're studying for a test, if you're studying for the board exam? Um, how do you balance your day? Is that your question? London, England, I have a lot of YouTube watchers from London, England, I've noticed, I think that's fantastic. I love that my YouTube channel is somehow reaching everyone. That is great. That is fantastic. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say hello in the chat box just so in case it doesn't pop up for you guys right away. Now it will. I'm just checking my laptop. It's going through some updates. Um, yes. Okay. So great question. Um, Glade, great question. So um, yes, you do need to study. So what I tell my students is I want you guys to be studying every day. Whether it be for classes, board exam, doesn't matter. I want you guys to get into the habit of studying every day, but only for two to six hours a day. So I know that's a wide range. It just, it truly depends, right? But I say two to six hours because for those of you who, you know, you wake up, you really don't want to study, study for two hours at least. If you're not working full time, if you're not doing anything else, then I want you to be studying six hours. It's a little bit different when you're in school because you might not have anything to study for that day. Or you might have 20, well not 20, but you might have five different tests to study for the week afterwards. So it really helps to plan your time, but you still need balance. So what I tell my students is, let's say study two hours in the morning, in the afternoon, go for a walk, go out for lunch, meet a friend, when you come back, study for another two hours. Um, have a nap if you have to. Play a video game, watch some TV, do what you want to. And then in the evening, study another two hours. When I was a student, I studied more at nighttime because that's just when I felt I retained the most information. Everybody's different. Um, and it helped me sleep. <laughs> it did. It helped me sleep. I would be reading my, my textbook. An hour later, I'd be falling asleep. So... Glade, I hope that that helps. If I didn't answer something, please just let me know. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of messages with my Apple Watch. <laughs> okay, um, Crystal, hello. So Crystal is saying she's in her second trim um, trimester. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Oh my God, no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> oh God. Um, in your second semester, becoming a dental hygienist. Good for you. Oh my God, school is stressful, right? I know. 
Um, you went over the cardio drugs chapter in pharmacology. Wow, it is a lot. What are your suggestions on remembering the cardio drugs? That's a really good question. Even I don't remember the cardio drugs and I've been doing this for 15 years. It's basically memorizing. I know that probably doesn't help you, but try to look at common, um, oh, what's the word? Like a lot of drugs might end a certain way, like um, they might sound the same. So if that kind of helps you memorize things and that will help, but it truly is based on memorization, I'm sorry. If you look in my um, YouTube channel, type in pharmacology drugs, you will find um, free YouTube videos that I have for you where I kind of go through exercises to help you remember. So you can try that. And then let me know if there's any questions. Oh, thank you guys for clicking like. That's fun. I keep forgetting that you guys can do that. So please click like. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe because I do um, upload new videos at least weekly, even more than that. And I have a podcast now. I don't know if you guys knew this. So if you really like listening to me talk, I don't know if you do or not. I personally don't like the sound of my own voice. I don't think anybody does. But if you like listening to me talk, definitely check out my podcast. There's a lot of videos on there. Um, cricket 35, how is the board exam score curved up? It depends on where you're taking the board exam. There's always a curve, but it does depend on where you live here in Ontario. They give you, there's four different exams circulating and three or four, sorry, I don't know for sure. Cause they might've changed that, but three or four exams always circulating and they do have fake false questions in the exam. So when you're taking the exam and if you think you did really, really well, well, some of those questions might be false, so might not count. Or if you think, oh, you know what? Five questions, I had no idea. Well, they might be part of the false questions, so they don't help. So basically they look at everybody who's taking the exam and they curve it that way. Um, from what I'm told, but nobody really knows for sure unless you're the exam writer. So I'm sorry, I can't help you too much with that either. But don't even think about that. What I tell my students is aim to get 100%. Literally, that's what I tell my students. If you aim to get 50%, well, guess what? You're probably going to get 20% and you're not going to pass. Aim to know everything for the exam. If you're part of my board exam prep academy course, I teach you guys critical thinking. I teach you guys um, at every live class that we have how to go through mock exam questions, answers, and I teach you guys the best answer, how to pick the best answer for every single session that we do. That's the best practice you can have. You can get aim to get 100% on that exam so you will pass for sure. Um, okay, perfect. So wild seed is saying you study every day, at least eight hours, but you're trying to cut down because I'm getting tired and can't remember. That's a great point. So I tell my students don't study eight hours. Heck, I would be tired too, you guys study two to six hours at the most, you will start to learn what times work best for you. When I was a student, if I studied in the morning, I would learn nothing because I was tired. I didn't want to study. I wasn't in the mood. You do have to be in the mood to study. Nobody's ever in the mood to study, but you would agree, right? That sometimes you're just more in the mood to study. And after you study, sometimes you kind of feel like, oh, I learned a lot today. Whereas other times you might be thinking, oh my God, I learned nothing. That was a waste of time. So I hope that that helps. Um, Cricket 35, great point. So what helps during the exam to ensure you're not tired? Um, do you mean when you're taking the exam or when you're studying like on your own for the exam? And you know, you guys, it's hard. Being students, I found I was chronically tired. I was chronically fatigued. Um, okay, so make sure to get, I know this sounds corny, but make sure to get enough sleep. Don't be studying until 2 a.m. Make sure to get enough sleep. And if you need a break, like not just during the exam, but I mean when you're studying on your own, if you need a break, take a day off. We all can suffer from burnout. Um, in fact, I just talked about um, burnout on my recent podcast where I experienced it too, you guys. Take a break if you need to. You're a human being. Maybe you need to take the whole day off to go shopping, spend too much money. But if that makes you feel better, it's worth every penny. So really for you, try to get enough sleep. 
during the exam, read through every single question um, carefully um, and, you know, take your time. Does coffee before the exam help? That's a good question as well. I can't really answer that because coffee affects everybody differently. I know for me, if I have a coffee before something important, I'm going to have to use the washroom probably 20 times. So I would actually avoid coffee. But for me, coffee does help me. So I will wake up extra early to be able to have that coffee, feel good. Um, and then two hours later, I can leave the house because I have to use the washroom so much when I have a coffee. But I find after two hours, my bladder returns back to normal. I know it's weird. It's true. But how to really help yourself with fatigue truly is individual. It's hard for me to answer that. But think about just getting enough sleep. Maybe coffee will help you. In some cases, talk to your doctor. Maybe taking half of an anti-anxiety pill might help you. I know lots of students who are doing that, and that's really helping them. I'm not here to recommend pills. Absolutely not. But I have talked to students where that has helped them. But obviously, try other means first so you don't have to be prescribed something. Um, how long does it take for the NBDHE scores to be posted? They've been really quick before. In the past, it's taken three weeks. Other times, it's taken six weeks, sometimes eight weeks. When I took the exam, it took a full eight weeks. Lately, it seems to be taking three or four weeks. So they do post them very, very quickly. Great questions, Cricket. Thank you. And thank you guys, by the way, for coming on live. This is great. Um, feel free to ask questions. I'm just checking my email quickly just to see if anybody sent questions there. I know this YouTube live was totally spur of the moment. Um, again, I apologize. The only reason why I'm on is because the patient canceled. So, you know, I thought of you guys right away because you guys rock. Thank you guys so much for commenting answering all of that you guys are just always fantastic speaking of fantastic are there certain videos that you guys want me to upload on youtube um i record my videos throughout the week just basically on topics where i get like questions emailed to me from like popular student questions please let me know and i can definitely talk about something Oh my goodness, Cricket. Um, you struggle remembering head and neck origin and insertion. Any advice? This is probably bad advice, but I struggled the same um, as you. I couldn't remember head and neck anatomy, you know, the muscles for the life of me. So I just didn't study it. I know, not the best advice from a tutor, but sometimes you just can't retain that information. Oh well. Even now, 15 years in practice, I have to look up the muscles because I just can't remember. But I guess better advice for you would be, honestly, it's memorizing. And it's just studying it over and over again, practicing. That's the best way to do it. It's hard. Dental hygiene topics, dental assisting topics are very difficult. They're hard. Just remember, studying won't be forever, okay? You will be done school soon enough. You will be. I promise. I promise. Ah, oh, boy, you guys. I think we're going to get a rainstorm. It looks pretty bad out there. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting sent so many messages. By the way, if any students or anybody have been emailing me, messaging me, sorry if it takes me a little bit to respond. I get a lot of messages that I try to respond to you in a timely fashion, I promise. But yeah, Cricket, thank you so much for commenting. This is great. Oh, cool. So it looks like 15 people are on right now, chatting away. I guess I should have really thought of something to talk about. I'm sorry. I just thought question and answer is fun. Let's do this. Um, after graduation, is it good to start working full time or temp? Again, that's up to you. I started working full time because I had a job lined up. I did temp throughout the years as well but it's because I wanted a more flexible schedule because with temping, you're basically told when to work. So they, they might call you and say, can you work Tuesday and Thursday this week? Okay, great, no problem, but you don't have set hours, um, which can be good or bad depending on what you want. Um, my last year working in the dental office, I temped mainly just because I didn't want full-time hours or regular part-time hours because I, I was teaching mostly. Um, so that is up to you. 
Um, how long did you have to wait till receiving your license after the boards and graduating? Oh, um, Jay Hicks, that's a good question. It's been such a long time. So don't quote me on this, but I think it just takes a couple weeks. It's really not fast. You have to fill out paperwork that your school sends you, fill it out, mail it off with a tracked package right away, and you will get your license quicker. Um, Ortho RDH, hello. Um, what are your go-to instruments for scaling? We learn all of these instruments and it takes too long to pick them. That's a great question. I am still constantly asking other dental hygienists what instruments they like to use because I kind of feel like I've been using the same ones forever that I might be missing something. So it's always good to ask a variety of people, but I, I really like the 204S, 204S, that's a a posterior sickle scaler. I like the anterior scaler, the one, two, I think it is. Shoot, I should have my instruments with me to show you guys. But there's another sickle scaler that has like a spoon on the one end of it. I love that one. I don't know the number though. <coughs> Whoa, I'm sorry. That's something stuck in my throat. <coughs> oh boy. Um, and that like really helps to get calculus off of the linguals um, of the lower and the upper anteriors and the cingulums, so I really like that one. Um, the posterior curettes, I truly don't have a favorite. Um, I just kind of, I don't even know which ones I have. I wanna say the 11, 12, 13, 14, I think I have those ones. I really like the 204S. I even use that for anteriors sometimes. You have to be careful, but I just, I love it. Crystal, thank you, the Nevi scoop. That does sound so familiar. I bet that's it. Um, Marcy Owen, hello. It's so nice to see you. Um, how do you feel about states whose dental boards do not require any minimum standard of education and training whatsoever to become a dental assistant? Um, oh, is that? Oh, it really depends on where. Even in Canada, you didn't need a license for the longest time to be a dental assistant. Like that's a new thing. I truly think you need a license for it. Um, Cause you're working inside a patient's mouth. I can't, I would not want a dental assistant working on me who didn't graduate from an accredited school. Cause as you guys know, it's hard work. It's not as simple as like an off. Well, I shouldn't say simple, but it's different than an office job. Like we are professionals. We are inside somebody's mouth. We are, putting things in people's mouths. So I really feel like people should have minimum standards of education and training. Absolutely. It's kind of like teeth whitening, where I think I even talked about this in my last live. There's a lot of places where you don't need to be certified to offer teeth whitening. Oh my goodness, you can burn the gum so easily, which is why I'm so passionate when I teach my teeth whitening course. It's not a, hey, learn how to teeth whiten in two hours. It's a, I teach you an 80 hour course, how to teeth whiten, in, do it properly. You learn stains, you have a business component to it, how to make money, how to keep clients, all of that. So it's kind of the same thing. I feel like anytime you're doing something inside a patient's mouth, you really need to be certified. So Marcy, that's a great point. Um, XX, hello. Should I work as a dental assistant for a bit or go straight to dental hygiene school? That's up to you. Um, I wanted to be a dental assistant first. I always knew I wanted to be a dental hygienist with my own business, but I took dental assisting school first. Um, well, I couldn't get into dental hygiene school because my marks weren't good enough, but I've always wanted to, to do dental assisting first because I wanted to really know all aspects of dental. I am very happy that I took dental assisting first because you learn the basics in dental assisting and that really helped me through my dental hygiene program. It truly did. So if you can, I would take dental assisting first. I would. Plus, if for some reason you don't like dental hygiene or something happens, you have dental assisting to fall back on and you can work as a dental assistant if you want while you're in dental hygiene school. So I really, really recommend dental assisting first, but it's not mandatory. Um, how long is a certified dental hygiene program supposed to be officially? They're so different. Mine was about 18 months. Now they're typically 18 months to two years. Some are even three years. Whereas a dental assisting course is typically one to two years, depending on where you're taking it. Mine was 11 months at the time, like way back when. 
Um, Jay Hicks, how was the separate ethics legal exam when you took it? Oh my God, it was brutal. When I took my ethics juris jurisprudence course, it's open book, thank God, but they basically ask you stupid questions. You can't study for it, you guys. Like, you truly can't. It's really difficult. It's, I mean, I shouldn't say difficult, but it's, it's useless. It's pointless. Have your book open, and that's the best advice I can give you. If you want to study for it, go ahead. But it's all memorizing. I remember taking it. Um, I passed the first time because I think you have multiple times to pass it. I passed the first time. I don't know how. I didn't know what I was doing. But I wanted to get it over with, right? Probably not the best advice, but good luck. It's hard. Um, best way to remember the teeth eruption and exfoliation timeline. I actually just did a video about this where I still can't remember the teeth eruption and exfoliation. So just go on Google, type in like dental eruption patterns or something. Print off that chart where it shows you the primary teeth and the permanent teeth. Print it off and have that. I still haven't memorized it. But if you practice, 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 I'm sure you can, but always have that like paper for you. Like I have that to show parents of my patients. Um, because it's hard for me to remember them too. Um, Cricket 35, can a hygienist own a dental practice? They can own a dental hygiene practice in most areas, not all areas, um, but they can. In Ontario, they can. I actually teach um, and mentor a dental hygienist, open up their own practice, but you need to, to go through your association and ask if you can, if you're not sure, because all areas are different and I couldn't possibly know worldwide which areas allow it or not. So please um, double check that, but you might be able to, or you might not be able to, unfortunately, but it's the best thing ever. Um, Amber, hello. Um, what are some things um, a new dental hygienist can do to avoid injury? Do you mean like back pain, like wrist pain, things like that? Knock on wood, you guys, knock on wood. I've been great. I am i haven't had any injuries. I feel good. I'm a mobile dental hygienist. I've been practicing for 15 years. I've been in dental offices. Posture is the biggest thing. I highly recommend investing in loops. Does everybody know what um, loops are? Those safety glasses with like magnifiers on them. Highly invest in those that improves your posture and get a light with your loops. This is where dental hygienists get injured is if they're constantly leaning over doing this, they're not sitting properly or they're working too much. Do not work 12 hours every day. Your body needs a break. Even in my own practice now, I'm a mobile dental hygienist. I do not work every day because I recognize my body needs a break. So let's say I'm seeing a family of five on Monday. I'm not going to work Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'm going to have easier patients. Like I'm going to book children, things like that. I'm not going to book a family of five on Monday, a family of five on Tuesday, a family of six on Wednesday. That is how you can avoid injury. Um, so Amber, I hope that helps. Um, Jay Hicks. Here it's open book. I'm assuming it's open book for everybody. I don't know. I'm sorry. So I guess I should have specified, but please double check. Um, but I just opened my book and did it that way. But open book exams aren't easy. Like they're not easy. Um, they're meant to quickly look up something if you can. They're not meant to, to go through every question, open book and find it. There's no way you'd have time for that. But yeah, I hope that helps. Um, can a dental assistant have their own business for teeth whitening in Canada as a level two? Now, XX, please double check. Check with your association because there's different areas, of course, in Canada. Some can and some cannot. Even if you cannot, um, there's different aspects of teeth whitening you can do in your own business. So you might not be allowed to apply the teeth whitening solution directly to the teeth, but what you might be allowed to do is apply the whitening solution onto a tray, hand the tray to your patient and have them put it in their mouth. You are there to monitor things. You are there to give them that solution where they wouldn't have been able to get otherwise, that kind of thing. So check with your association and then let me know if you have any questions. So I know there's so many rules. What is the average salary of dental hygienists now in Ontario? Is there so much saturation? Oh my goodness, they're looking for dental hygienists. 
Dental hygienists are quitting like wildfire. I don't know why. Um, maybe the pandemic, maybe they don't want to work anymore, but here we need hygienists. The average salary, it's really hard to quote me because in Ontario, it's so different. When I was in Kitchener, I was making upwards to $40 per hour, whereas in London, just a few hours away, it was probably $31 an hour if I was lucky. So it really depends. Somewhere, it's even $55 per hour. So it really depends on where you live. Um, Lauren Anderson, hello. Um you're not sure if you should take the dental assisting board exam in June or September. You graduated in May and I am not sure when to take it. This is a very common question. I can't answer that for you. Um, I tell people when you're ready, take it. It's not easier in June. It's not easier in September. It just truly depends on when you feel ready. I always suggest taking it sooner rather than later because you don't want to stress yourself out more than you have to. You can take it around Christmas time if you want to, but do you really want to have to study all that time? Probably not. So let's say you graduate in May. Do you feel confident taking it in June? If not, wait until September. When I was um, when I graduated as a dental assistant, I literally took my exam like two weeks later. I was so happy I did it. I didn't want to wait. When I was a dental hygienist, I was able to take the exam even before I graduated because I had met certain clinical requirements. I took it right away because I didn't want to stress myself out by having to wait, study more. Um, so it's really it it really depends on how you feel. So Lauren, I hope that helps. Um, and um, Danish Mohamed, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Did I answer that for you with um, the salary? of dental hygienists in Ontario. It really does depend. And thank you guys for clicking like. <laughs> it makes me feel good that people are actually listening to me. This is good. Any other questions, you guys? These are great comments, great questions. Um, let's see, what can I say? So basically, the common questions lately are teeth whitening businesses and having your own dental hygiene business check with your local association if you are allowed to open those businesses here in ontario we can but it depends on your expertise depends on all of that ask your association i cannot do that for you because they will ask you questions that only you would know like how long you've been practicing what your credentials are things like that um what was your gpa when you graduated in dental hygiene you have straight a's right now with three semesters left to go good for you holy moly um dental hygiene i know i had straight a's in dental assisting dental hygiene i want to say i had a's as well but not throughout i always managed to upkeep the a's i think i might have had a few b's i don't know you guys but school was tough school was really difficult i just wanted to pass to be able to pass and graduate um, so try not to worry too much about keeping up with the A's, but of course you want to do that. But just because you get A's in school doesn't mean you will pass the board exam if that makes you feel better. Or if you're getting B's in school, you it doesn't mean that you're not going to pass the board exam. So just do the best you can and try not to get stressed out. I remember those days. What does continuing education look like for assisting in um, hygiene? Um, like the different courses you take. I, I really like vivalearning.com. Let me type that out, vivalearning.com. Free courses, free continuing education. Here in Ontario, we need 75 hours of continuing education every three years. I take a lot more than that anyway, but those are things that you have to do. Dental assistants, I'm not a dental assistant any, well, I am, well, no, I'm not, I'm a dental hygienist but I can't speak to their continuing education because I just don't know. That's something that I would have to look up, but you do have to maintain that and get um, continuing education to always be relicensed every year. Um, Amber Marie, good question. Has a dentist ever asked you for your um, GPA? No, they don't care about your marks. On your resume, you don't put your marks, they don't care. They don't even care where you graduated, just as long as you have graduated, which is nice, eh? um nizza nizza nisha oh my gosh sorry i'm probably pronouncing your name so wrong 
So let me answer your question. So you are currently in dental hygiene school, second um, second semester today. Exciting. We had our first patient. Any advice on applying what I learned in the book to patients? I feel like I'm separating the information. So you had your first patient where you were actually um, cleaning their teeth? You know, you know what? The textbook and the real world is so different. Um, is there something in particular that you're struggling with? Let me know. Um, Amutia, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name right. As a new graduate, um, would you recommend working full time? I know it's not a clear answer for this, but what's your take? Um, and you're right, there's no clear answer, but it's up to you. When I first graduated, I wanted to work full time. I was excited. I was ready to go. Um, I believe I was working full time, but if you can't find full time, only part time, take it. Um, there's no reason why I would not recommend working full time. Um, do I think um, dental therapy is on the rise? Yes, I think so. Oh, hi, um, cry baby from Indonesia. Hello, so nice to see you. Um, and Jojo Poo, <laughs> Jojo Poo, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I like your name. Um, you've been assisting for five years, but your doctor did everything. Um, you left your office and feel like in interviews, you can't say that you have experience. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. There are a lot of dentists that do do everything and they don't really let their assistant help them. Don't say that. Just act like you have experience. I mean, you will learn a lot on the job. Every office is different anyway. So even if in the interview you get the job, you're working in an office they they will do things differently anyway. So don't worry about not feeling like you have experience. You have to get experience somehow. So don't openly say, I feel like I have no experience. The doctor did everything. This means you are moldable. You are willing to learn. You're excited. You understand that every office is different and you're looking forward to them teaching you how they do things. That's how I would approach it. Um, how do you go about reporting an office that has a dentist or, or anyone being disrespectful to you? Oh, such as a dentist throwing instruments to the floor. Oh my God. Do you still work there? XX? I would leave. I would go so fast. Um, good question about reporting. I would report them to the dental association. It's not easy. Um, because you know, who wants to do that, but that's what I would do. I wonder if you can even report them to what's called the labor board because um, that's not safe work conditions. So does that make sense? I would absolutely report them. Tell your friend to report them because that's stressful. Nobody should have to deal with that. Nobody. That's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh, so... Um, Nisha, so your first patient, you went through the whole um, dental sequence today. So like you went through like the paperwork, you went through the like assessments, the diagnosis, the cleaning the teeth, all of that. It's, it's overwhelming, right? I remember those days. It gets easier, I promise. Even in the real world, it's easier. School is tougher than the real world. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, holy cow. Like you have like what, two hours um, per clinic, like per appointment. Sometimes you can't even finish one appointment in two hours. Um, the real world is so much better, if I can say that. So it takes practice, you guys. I remember when I cleaned my first patient's teeth. Oh my God, I probably barely touched them. Like I picked up a scaler, barely touched a tooth. I'm like, oh my God, I'm done. The gum started bleeding. What the heck? <laughs> True story. Now I get in there with my scalers, curettes, and I'm rocking it, okay? I love to see bleeding because that tells me I'm doing a good job. Okay, so you only got up to the probing part. I remember probing and being super nervous. It just takes practice. I know that's not very good advice. Um, I remember asking dental hygienists too to give me advice and that's basically what they said. It's so true. Don't be afraid to get right in there. Don't, I mean, don't hurt your patient, but don't be super gentle either. Don't be afraid to get right in there. Ask your instructor questions. They're there to help you clinically so they can help you more than me. 
Um, second year Canadian dental student here. You just wanted to say that you enjoy my videos. Oh, thank you. I am so happy to hear that. Thank you for watching my videos. I do hope that they help you. That's truly my goal is to help you guys as much as possible. It's my true passion. I, it really is. I love teaching and mentoring the whole works. So thank you guys for watching and thank you for clicking like. Thank you guys for subscribing. I really appreciate it. It makes me feel good that I have people watching my videos. It really does. It makes me feel like this is why I do it. Sorry, I'm just going to have some water again. <laughs> um, Ortho RDH, you're so welcome. My pleasure. I do like to come on live for you guys often. I just never know when I'm going to do it. It depends on when I have time. I'm literally fully booked. Like I'll show you guys my calendar. It's crazy. Every second of every day is fully booked. Okay. See, there you go. <laughs> so I come on when I can. So thank you. Um, Nisha. Yes. Please ask away any questions you have. Um, Amuta tips for handling difficult patients. I have lots of videos on YouTube. Type in my channel, um, like patients, difficult patients. I have lots of videos. Um, the best advice I can give you is kill them with kindness. It works. Um, in my mobile practice, if I have a difficult patient, I just don't see them because I don't have time for that. But you know what? I've only ever had one difficult patient so far. In a dental office, there's lots of difficult patients. Um, kill them with kindness. I promise you that's the way to go. But if the kindness doesn't work, then it's okay to be firm with them. For example, I've had difficult patients in the past who are just being difficult in one way or another. I kill them with kindness. Nothing works. They're becoming more and more rude. Then what I will actually say to them, and it makes me feel so much better. What I will say to them is, okay, you know what? You're just being rude now. I don't have time for this. You can rebook with somebody else. Yeah, that's what I do. It makes me feel so much better. So it's up to you. Um, XX, you're, you're very welcome. Phoebe, nope, you did not come on too late. I am still here. Thank you for coming on. Yes, what is your question? Um, and Jay Hicks, thank you for answering that. Um, tell them what you know and how the procedure goes. Um, you notice full um, disclosure helps. And that's true. Now, what was Amuda's question again? Oh, um, about the difficult patient? Or were you about another question about um, recommending full time maybe? Um, Nisha, so studying advice as a whole, study two to six hours every day. You know, it depends. If you work full time, don't study six hours every day because you can't, but at least study two hours a day. Take breaks. Do not study like six hours fully or, you know, four hours fully. Take a break. So two hours in the morning, two hours after a break in the afternoon, two hours in the evening. That's up to you. Be consistent with your studying, but also take days off. So if you feel burnt out, you're tired, take a day off. That's allowed. Um, and something to keep in mind. Let's say you're studying anatomy and you're reading your PowerPoint for anatomy. You're not going to learn that full PowerPoint the first time you read it. It's going to take you two hours probably to read through everything. You will barely probably grasp that PowerPoint. Do it again the next day. You will grasp more and more. I find the mistake a lot of students do is they will read, let's say, anatomy for two hours. They expect to know everything and then they get annoyed when they don't know what they just read. It's going to take you two or three days of reading the same PowerPoint to really grasp it. That's the best advice I can give you. Don't give up. It takes time, but you can do it. So Nisha, I hope that that helps. Um, and Phoebe, what is your question? Like, feel free to ask away. I'm not gone yet. Um, we have until 730. I just checked my time. So we have 10 more minutes. So please ask away. Um, Amira, hello. Do you have any recommendations for colleges in Ontario? Is there a difference between a college? What have we, um, what we have to put into consideration? Honestly, I don't. 
all dental hygiene colleges are the same, meaning they're not easy, they're not hard, you have to pay around the same, it just really depends. When I was looking for a college, I wanted one close to home, and that's what I did. Um, I prefer private colleges myself, because they're easier to get into, meaning if you have the money, you can get in. Whereas community colleges, you need to have like a 99% for them to even consider you. And they only accept people certain months throughout the year. Whereas private colleges, they typically always take intake. You would just be part of a different group. Um, but that's just my opinion. Private colleges might be a little more expensive, but worth every penny. I went to private colleges for dental assisting, for dental hygiene. I wouldn't change a thing. I went to Toronto College of Dental Hygiene, by the way. Um, great school, still really hard. I cried every day. It was impossible, but all schools are like that as far as I know. Hope that helps. Um, sorry, I'm getting some great questions. I don't want to miss any here. Um, Lauren Anderson, how do you remember everything on an x-ray? Do you mean like the x-ray like how to point out enamel, caries, things like that. Is that what you mean? Um, and Phoebe says, you've been an assistant for five years and you want to go to school for hygiene. Good for you. If I get into the program, would I be able to work as an assistant while in program or I have to be full time? Yes, you can absolutely work as a dental assistant while you're in the dental hygiene program. I tell people, though, if you don't have to work, don't work. The dental hygiene program is impossible. It's so difficult. I worked part time and I wish I didn't have to because it was very stressful. If I could have just not worked and focused on my studies, I would have been so much less stressed. But of course, I was living on my own. I needed to work. I didn't have a choice. But if somehow you don't have to work while in dental hygiene school, don't do it. That's my advice to you. Okay. But to answer your question, yes, you can absolutely work as a dental assistant as well. Uh, Nisha, you're welcome. Um, Rod, hello. How do you manage bioaerosols in the operatory in this pandemic? So I'm a mobile hygienist. It's different. I don't have to manage the aerosols. I mean, not the same as a dental office. I go into patients' homes, so they're exposed to their aerosols only. I wear the full PPE. So I have the gown, the KN95 mask, the level three mask. I have a face shield, my safety glasses. That's how I manage them. Rod, I hope that helps. Let me know, though, if I didn't answer something for you. Um, XX, where to start to look what certified you wanted to do temp work and also where to look to work in a mobile office. Um, XX, so basically any office is usually hiring. Um, you can even email offices and send in your resume and just say, I would love to be considered when you're hiring for this position. Um, check online, like those online job search sites, definitely check that. A mobile dental hygienist are not usually hiring. Like me, I'm a mobile dental hygienist, but I'm just one person. I'm not hiring. I don't know any mobile dental hygienists that are, but you never know. You can do, like you can post on a Facebook group and you can say, hey, which offices are hiring? Well, like a dental hygiene or a dental assistant Facebook group. Um, in this location, are there any mobile dental hygienists hiring in this location? So you can do that. Um, Lauren Anderson, um, sorry, excuse me, Lauren Anderson. So the floor of the orbit, the maxillary tuberosity. Oh, I don't know. I find those, you just have to memorize the landmarks. Um, like I know them now pretty well, I think just because of constant memorizing. So anytime you have to like landmarks, anatomy, x-rays, anything like that is just memorizing. I know not the most exciting, but that's kind of what you do. Um, um, Amira, yes, I do. So Amira is asking, do you have any videos or advice on the admissions tests and the interviews for the colleges? Yes, Amira, do a search on my YouTube channel for interview or like dental hygiene interview, dental assisting interview. Mo some of my most viewed YouTube content is advice on interviews. They're older videos though. I feel I look horrible in them. I don't like, I should have done like better lighting or something, but I do. So definitely have a look for those. Do a search on my channel. You will find amazing videos. Um, I wonder, can I find that for you guys on my different monitor? 
Um, Amira, I'm going to kind of do a search now for you to see if I can find it, okay? I'm going to do a search throughout my answering here, and then I'll post it. Um, Phoebe, you're so welcome. I hope that helps. Um, XX, Oxford College. Um, yeah, so basically look for certified colleges. Um, I don't want to talk ill about any colleges, so I will not. But the good ones that I've heard of are Toronto College of Dental Hygiene, A+. Plus. Um, dental hygiene, um, Oxford College is in Toronto, right? So I'm just talking about other colleges that are in Toronto too. So look at them. It can't hurt to ask for a tour, tour the college, talk to the staff there. Um, so you get a good feeling for kind of what you want. And hey, you might apply to all of them and only one of them accepts you. So kind of look at that too. Um, I'm just doing a search for interviews. I want to find one of my YouTube videos where, okay. Oh no, but it's a dental interview. That's right. It's not about admissions. Ah, I did find one, you guys. Um, let me, it was three years ago. I forget what I say in this, but a lot of people really liked it. So I am posting the link right here for you um interview prep there hope that helps but still do a search on my youtube channel for interview and you'll find tons um m is asking hello how do you upgrade and improve as a dental assistant certificates or something else that's a good question with the pandemic you can't really take in-person courses i do offer a refresher course for dental assistants if you're interested let me put my website down. Feel free to message me through my website and I can give you more information. So what I do offer is just basically like videos on just a refresher dental assisting course, how to be the best dental assistant possible. But you, you, you also don't need that. Like you can take continuing education. I love vivalearning.com for continuing education. They have great like um, courses. Just type in like dental assistant in the search bar and then you'll find tons. Um, ortho RDH, everybody's different. Piezo or Cavitron. I, P I prefer Piezo. I have used both. I just prefer Piezo is lighter on the patient but still does a really, really good job without being too heavy handed. But I have known close dental assist, um, close dental hygienists who we have worked together. They hate the Piezo. They love the Cavitron. So it really depends on who you ask. I suggest trying both and you will find one that you prefer, but definitely an investment, a good investment though. I couldn't live without my piezo. Um, Nisha, yes. Now a mobile dental hygienist isn't common or popular in a lot of areas. A lot of areas you can't have your own mobile dental hygiene business. I'm a mobile dental hygienist. I'm a, a bleh. I'm a mobile dental hygienist because in my area you can be one. I'm the only one though in my area. So I go to patients' homes because it's more comfortable for them, easier for them, and I clean teeth that way. I love it. I would not have it any other way. I love it. Um, yes, um, Amira, I will actually do another video. Check out the ones that I have though on YouTube now. I'm making a note for myself because it might be a week or so before I can do that video, but that's a really good video topic. Thank you. So stay tuned for my YouTube then. Make sure to subscribe so you guys can see these videos. And you guys have the link to my new pod, um, podcast. Check it out because I do update my podcast even more. If you look on Spotify or just anywhere that you can listen to podcasts, my podcast is Doing Dental Differently. I will type that out. Doing dental differently. That's my podcast. Okay, guys, a couple more minutes for questions. And then I do have to go because I'm teaching this evening. So comment and I will answer as much as I can before 730. We have two more minutes. Liz, hello. Um, at what millimeter gum recession would you advise for a gum graft? I have no gum disease and just recently got a mouth guard and sonic brush. Oh, good for you. Mouth guards are awesome. awesome. I love sonic toothbrushes. I actually don't recommend a gum graft unless you're in pain from your dental reception. 
because a gum graft is an invasive surgery, takes forever to heal, it's painful, and 90% of the time it doesn't work very well. I've never had a happy patient after a gum graft. But if you're in pain from your dental re um, recession, then a gum graft does help because it covers it up and you won't be in pain anymore. But typically we say if it's five millimeters or more recession to get a gum graft, but I still don't, re I don't recommend them. Um, brush carefully, brush lightly. That's the best way to not get dental recep um, reception, recession, okay? If you have gum recession, don't brush too hard. And the best thing to do is to maintain it so it doesn't get worse. Not brushing too hard, and but brushing well twice a day, every day with a good toothpaste, a good mouthwash. Don't brush too hard. That's the best advice. So Liz, that's a great question. I even have videos on my YouTube channel about gum recession. So definitely check those out where I do offer you guys more tips. Okay, you guys, any last minute questions? We have one more minute. I'm sorry, I do have to go to teach, but I hope that this helped you guys. I will be uploading some more videos as always. Um, thank you so much for all of your comments today. And thank you guys for commenting on the videos. I do try to answer them in a good amount of time. I apologize if it takes me a little while. If you ever need to reach me as soon as possible, go to my website. I'm going to type it in again at dentalpodia.com. I have my website information in the description anyway of all of my YouTube videos, plus my podcast link as well. Send me a message through there and I can get back to you quicker, okay? YouTube comments are more difficult. I get a lot of them, which is great. Please keep commenting, but it just might take me a little bit longer to get back to you. You guys were awesome. Thank you so much for hopping on. I love to talk to all of you guys. This is recorded. I'm going to post the recording as soon as it's available. Thank you guys for listening and commenting. Um, Crystal, what are your classes and when should we look into them? Um, do you mean the classes that I have for my teaching? Um, if you go to my website, scroll down and then you will see. Um, I teach a board exam prep academy. I teach all of that. Feel free to look down there. Um, on my website, and then you can see all of the different classes that I do have. Oh, hi, um, Jesse from Korea. That's exciting. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. Thank you. Um, blah, thanking. Thank you for saying hello. That is amazing from Korea. That's exciting. Thank you. Have a great night as well. Everybody have a fantastic night. Thank you again for hopping on. Thank you for clicking like. It makes me feel pretty special. Um, and Crystal, yes. So have a look at the website and you can open up a chat box on the website and send me a message directly if you have any questions. Okay, you guys, sorry to cut this short. I got to go. I don't want to be late for my students. Um, have a great evening. I can't say that enough. It was so nice to talk to you guys. Thank you. Bye for now. XX, thank you. Bye, guys.